here with his analysis on the latest Supreme Court ruling is Mohammed El Rashidi. He's a civil and criminal defense lawyer in Toronto. Mohammed, good of you to take the time today. Nice to see you. What, Thank you, Brad. What, is your, what were your initial thoughts when you heard uh, this ruling and the implications that it'll have on criminal sentencing across the country? Um, it's going to have a wide-reaching impact. There, there's a definite issue here uh, in the sense that uh, you now have a decision that caps the uh, sentencing for uh, anyone who's convicted of a criminal crime, uh, of, a, of a crime, no matter what they committed, no matter what the nature of the crime is, no matter how many people you kill, no matter how aggravating the circumstances are, after 25 years, you will be eligible for parole. So that is that really changes the landscape uh, uh, across the country. So how do you feel about that? Well, I think you, you have to remember a few decades ago, Canada did have the death penalty, and a lot of people felt that that is a cruel and unusual punishment. And so as a society, we, we do change and, and we do move in different directions. And I think uh, this is an example of our society in the eyes of the nine Supreme Court justices. It's an unanimous decision that we have moved in a direction where sentencing somebody to jail, no matter what they have done, to more than 25 years without giving them an opportunity for parole is cruel and unusual punishment. And so as a society, what the Supreme Court is, is saying is we draw the line at 25 years, no matter what you have done. And I think uh, there's sort of different sides of looking at it. If I wear different hats, I think uh, from a defense attorney uh, perspective, uh, it's definitely something you welcome because you do want the charter upheld, particularly in this case, Section 12, that there should be a limit to the cruelty with which we deal with people no matter what they have done. And this puts a cap on it. I think some of the concern uh, from the legal standpoint is it puts a lot of power in the hands of the parole boards which in this case in particular, there's a lot of uh, issues related to race, a lot of uh, problems uh, in that case. It was high profile uh, because of the impact that it had on a specific community, the Muslim community. So you got to remember that none of that has been addressed in the criminal proceedings. This case did not proceed as a terrorism case. The Crown in Quebec chose not to go down that route. It was not dealt with as a hate crime, and it, it did not trigger any of those provisions uh, b by uh, the authorities. And so it was dealt with as murder of six individuals. And so the community, I think, uh, has to, do, to be a little bit disturbed in the sense that nothing has been done about this to deal with the elephant in the room. Uh, the Supreme Court did give a couple of lines sort of respectfully giving what we would call lip service to the damage this has done to the community. But the reality still is that this individual has set new law uh, by lowering the sentence uh, that any Canadian uh, will face uh, in the criminal justice system after having carried out a massacre in a mosque. So he could be out at 52 years of age. So at 52 years of age, you can have somebody walking the streets who has massacred uh, Muslims in a place of worship. Now, realistically speaking, Andrew, the parole board uh, w will address this in 25 years, and, and I would say he is unlikely to get that, uh, to get the decision to, to be released. But we are still dealing with a very uh, dangerous situation in the eyes of certainly the Muslim community to have people such as uh, Mr. Bissonnette released at, uh, you know, uh, uh, 52 years of age or, or somewhere around that range. Mohammed, appreciate your, you taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Mohammed Al Rashidi is a civil and criminal defense lawyer. He joined us live in Toronto. You're looking live at the scene in Houston, Texas.